Hello there, I am Dean and welcome to Dean's Brick Show. Hope you've been enjoying my videos and if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button and leave a comment and also hit that bell so you can be notified uh, with all my future releases. Okay, so my last video I put out my top five favorite Lego sets and I also did my top five that I'm most excited to build. And if you remember, uh, number one was the Haunted House, part of the Fairgrounds collection. And I went ahead and I built that set. And um, to sum it up, uh, you know, it does, that set did not disappoint. It uh, ended up being much larger than I expected. Um, you know, you see pictures of it online on Lego.com and, you know, various other sites and it just does not do it justice it's it's a lot taller it's 28 inches tall so that's pretty cool take, it's going to take up a lot of room in one of these boys so um let's take a closer look there's a lot of lot going on here a lot of special features um it has you know 3231 pieces so there's a lot of pieces here and even some moving parts it has a working elevator and in my uh, video when I talked about it being uh, the one I'm most excited to build, um, you can buy a motor um, to make the elevator move, which I thought was the only way it can move, but it turns out there's a hand crank, which I will show you. So you can do it manually if you don't want to spend, you know, the you have to buy like two separate components which would end up costing you, you know, like $65, $70. So I'm probably just going to keep keep the hand crank and, you know, save 70 bucks there. But all in all, it's a really cool set. So let's take a look. And here is our haunted house in all its glory. Out front, we have a nice little graveyard, a couple of tombstones, a bat on one of the tombstones, uh, some vines, a pumpkin, one of our twin butlers, and one of the unsuspecting teenagers holding a ticket, does not look happy, um, happens to be in a wheelchair. Um, I think that's kind of cool that Lego is a being a little more diverse lately and uh, showing showing something like this, you know, somebody at home who might be in a wheelchair, you know, sees that and thinks, oh, wow, you know, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm represented, you know, in, in a Lego set. So I think that's kind of nice. And again, this uh, haunted house is 28 inches tall, a lot taller than I thought it was going to be. Um, and I really like the color motif too. this kind of a split pea green um, and, and blacks for the rooftop and then your, your gray bricks as well. And so I really like that a lot. And then on the back side here, we have our, our crank, our motor, all these Technic pieces used to operate the elevator. And, uh, we have like a chain link going up the entire length here pretty much. And that was like 150 pieces of these little tiny parts that I had to put together. Very tedious. I felt like it took me about an hour. I hope I don't do that anytime soon. And then out front here, again, on the top, you'll notice it looks like little tiny frogs, maybe where gargoyles should be, uh, but they're frogs. So uh, that's a fun little twist. Okay, inside the haunted house, we have lots of hidden little features and artifacts. This here is the Idol of Everest. It was snatched from an Everest mountain temple. It is said the tendrils reach out into the unknown but it also makes a great coat rack. And here we have the obelisk of evil. Von Baron stole this obelisk because it had the most evil inscription he had ever seen. Here is the organ of Caterino. Von Baron had this organ custom built in Portugal. He mostly used it to play TV show theme songs. The heads of Anubis airlifted it out of the Temple of Anubis. Supposedly, they are just for decoration. That's it, and that's all. The face of the Sphinx, the very first Egyptian item that Baron stole. The entire manor was built around it. The little red box with the handle is the escape plan. Von Baron lined the face of the Phoenix with dynamite just in case any curses came along with it. Here we have the golden dingus. As Von Baron reached out for the golden dingus, the Yeti appeared. 
and ate his left hand. Luckily, he already had a hook for a left hand and simply replaced it with another. And then right there in the middle, we have a box of junk. It's just a good old dusty box of junk. And then on the right, we have the Orb of Ogle, a prototype for the mind control super weapon used by the evil Ogle Empire. Von Baron always kept one handy for a rainy day. Looks like a jar of mustard, if you ask me. A large jar of mustard. Here we have the Forbidden Skeleton. Some say Sam Sinister's car exploded while running from the law, leaving only his skeleton and top hat behind. Some say there was once a third twin butler. Nobody knows for sure. And behind the Forbidden Skeleton, we have the Altar of Alhazred. It is unknown for what dark rites this heavy-looking stone table was originally intended, but the Baron used it for light reading on rainy days. This device here is the Resonator. In a failed attempt to harness the power of the Regu Ruby, with this device, Von Baron accidentally summoned two friendly spirits from beyond. Spirit 1 and Spirit 2 from beyond. And lastly, we have the portrait of Samuel von Baron. As the portrait was finished, a strange glow started emanating from the ruby. Trapped in the mummy's curse, Van Baron was driven mad by the pharaoh Hotep's terrible jokes. And if you look closely, you will see the mummy's curse. And where is that ruby, you ask? Could it be right here, hiding in plain sight? Nobody knows for sure. Except for Von Baron himself. And he, my friends, is dead. Or is he? And now the moment you've all been waiting for are two fun-time teenagers going up for a ride in the elevator at Manor Von Baron. It's old, it's rickety, it's making lots of noises. And up, up, up they go. And what happens when they get all the way to the top, you ask? This is what happens. The doors open and whoosh! Back to the bottom they go. Good night. Alrighty, and here we have our fun minifigures. Um, there are ten total, and that includes a skeleton. On the far left, uh, I'm not sure what his name is, but he's got really cool hair, like I do, so let's call him Dean. And we have our twin uh, butlers who run Manor Von Baron. 
Um, the third butler, maybe the skeleton, not sure, but he's just hanging around on the inside. And here we have our three uh, gals. And this gal on the right here, she has an NB on her jacket, which I believe stands for Newberry, which was from the Hidden Side theme. Um, all those sets took place in the fictional town of Newberry. So that's kind of cool that there was a potential crossover with themes, maybe. And then we have our two uh, spirits um, summoned from the Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, the Beyond. And then we have our boy here on the end who has the golden ticket. He looks frightened. Um, sorry, you are not going to see Willy Wonka. You are going to the haunted house. And here we have our minifigures. Okay, quickly here, just wanted to show you the box art. Um, I always like to show off the box art here and just kind of, you know, let you know what it looks like. Uh, just a nice little fun picture of the haunted house with all the minifigures standing out in front. Um, got some nice bats flying around there. Um, so overall, just kind of a, a nice, good looking box. Um, it's, you know, just kind of black and, and green, which are, you know, your colors of the haunted house. And then uh, on the back side here, it just shows you kind of everything um, going on within the haunted house. Um, all your minifigures. Um, the one thing I'm pointing out here is the base plates. Very thin, very thin, um, just not a lot of support. Um, and that was the only negative thing about this set. Alrighty there, so that is my review of the Lego Haunted House. All in all, it's a great set, great build. Uh, you know, all, other than the, the base plates, you know, it was just one level of base plates which made the move from here to back there very difficult. Um, even my Sesame Street set that I have up here had basically two layers of base plates that beefed up that little set and that's a much smaller set. Um, so I may add uh, another base plate or beef that one up a little bit just to make it a little sturdier. That way if I ever have to move it again, I don't have to worry about it breaking or collapsing. But other than that, love the set, great minifigures, a lot of great little details inside. Um, I might have to look into getting some other fairground collection sets. And who knows, maybe they'll come out with some other, you know, spooky sets here in the future. So great set, great build, recommend it, worth every penny. And remember, it's a big world out there. Brick it up. Good night. Oh, and don't forget, hit that subscribe button.